Okay, um, we'll call the select board meeting for Wednesday, December 1st, 2021 to order. And here from the select board is Jane Nevin Smith, David Phil, Joyce Chunglo, John Weskevitz, and Amy Parsons. And this meeting is being recorded and all votes will be taken via roll call. And first on the agenda is consent agenda. We have warrants AP2222, AP2222S, AP2221, AP2221S, AP2220, AP2220S, AP2219, AP2219S, and PR2210. Uh, we don't have any minutes, but we have Friends of the Council on Aging art opening. Uh, whoops. Was that a change, uh, Jennifer? Because the public content I'm seeing is different than what you just sent me. I have, I have liquor licenses on mine, and the one you sent has COA art openings. They're one and the same, probably. Okay. The liquor right. licenses. I'm sorry, okay. I have a mitt in my mouth. That's okay. I'll go with this. All right. One day liquor license, friends of the COA, January 14th, March 11th, May 13th, July 8th, and September 9th. Historical Commission appointment for Adriana Serzinski. Hadley Police Department Acting Sergeants Thomas Douglas and Rylan Baronis. Part-time dispatcher um, that is postponed until December 15th. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. And do we want to pull out, uh, Joyce, did you want to say something? Our chiefs here, I'll pull out the sergeants. That would be fine, they can speak. Yep, and then, uh, okay. Any other discussion on the consent? All right, Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Miskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. And Chief, do you want to talk for a second about the sergeant appointment? Uh, absolutely. I will. Uh, I'll keep it short. Um, not that the uh, the two individuals here don't deserve a uh, a, a nice long bio, uh, but as you can see, Ryland uh, looks like he's on duty right now. So if he gets up and runs out of the room, uh, you know why. Um, so uh, as as many of you know, uh, one of our supervisors just left recently, to, uh, le leaving uh, law enforcement altogether, and we uh, began looking for a replacement. We were, however, already prepared within the budget to add uh, another sergeant to the ranks because we, uh, you know, with police reform and everything that's going on, we need more supervision on the road. Uh, so we have been holding a acting supervisor process for. Um, uh, a few months and uh, finally got the process completed. Uh, we had four uh, excellent applicants and uh, Tom Douglas and Ryland Baronis uh, were selected to be put forth to the board tonight for uh, promotion to acting sergeant. I'll read a quick bio on both of them so you know, um, you're reminded anyways of, of uh, who we're gonna be promoting tonight. Uh, Tom Douglas, First, uh, was appointed as a special police officer in Hadley in January of 2018. Uh, it was that following July that he was promoted to full time. Prior to working in uh, Hadley, Tom was a special police officer in West Springfield and in South Hadley, and was also emergency uh, an emergency dispatcher in South Hadley. Tom is a Western Mass native, uh, graduating from West Springfield High School in 2003, and he currently lives in South Hadley. Since becoming a police officer in Hadley. He's been well regarded by his peers, as well as the command staff. Uh, he's been an active police officer and has expressed interest in specialized assignments like canine, uh, as well as criminal investigations. Uh, during his time at Hadley, he's also become certified in crisis intervention and has recently become a field training officer, assisting new officers navigate their initial training process. Tom also regularly serves as the shift officer in charge. So essentially he carries many of the duties uh, that a sergeant would carry, uh, he just does it for free. Um, so we're trying to uh, remedy that. Um, the next uh, individual is Rylan Baronis. I'm sure you uh, all recognize him as well. Uh, Rylan has been employed by the town of Hadley since November of 2017, uh, when he was appointed as a special police officer. And in November of 2018, he was promoted to full time. 
prior to working in Hadley, Rylan was a part-time officer in the town of Coleraine for nearly two years. Rylan is also a Western Mass native, living in Deerfield and having graduated from Frontier in 2013. And he also has earned an associate's degree in criminal justice from uh, Greenfield Community College. Over the past three years, Ryland has been an active patrol officer, becoming quickly uh, experienced in our high call, high call volume and call variety. Ryland is a member of our Marine Patrol Unit Crisis Intervention Team, and is also one of several department field training officers, just like Tom. Uh, also, Ryland has served as the officer in charge, and most notably was the officer in charge on the evening of August 22nd uh, of this year when there was a double shooting at the Walmart in Hadley. Um, so everyone is aware the intent behind the uh, acting sergeant program is to train these two officers and essentially see how they do. Uh, the plan is, uh, is to promote these two individuals for likely a full shift bid, which generally lasts about four months. Uh, if we need to see more, we obviously can extend the time. Um, and, and then likely what we will do is we will rotate these two individuals out and attempt to train the other two as well. And then we will select a, uh, two permanent uh, supervisors. So what I am asking for you to, uh, for, for the board to do tonight is to um, accept my recommendation and promote Tom Douglas and Ryland Baronis to the rank of acting sergeant for the Hadley Police Department. And then we will, uh, revisit this several months from now. So moved. moved. Motion by George, second by Jane. Any other discussion on this? It's a great program, and um, I think it serves our purpose on um, training and getting to really know the position. And um, great candidates right now. Um, you've done so well. Um, I'm glad it's not going to be my decision in the end, but. Uh, Welcome to the training program and good luck to you. Okay. Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chung Liu? Yes. <clears throat> Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, to the two new sergeants that, uh, that came onto the meeting tonight, thanks for being here and congratulations. Thank you very well, much. Yeah, thank you. All right. So uh, next we'll go down to uh, public comments. Um, we'll limit this to 15 minutes. Please keep your comments to three minutes um, or less so that everyone has a chance to speak. If anyone here is here for public comments, turn on your camera, wave at us. Uh, Catalina? Yes, hi. Um, I am with the Hadley Cultural Council. Catalina, you're on for 645. You actually have an appointment. Oops, 6.45. Oof, you know what? I'm sorry, I have another appointment at 6.45. All right, uh, after this public comments is done, I can, uh, I'll let you go, but let's just knock the public comments out of the way real Thank quick. You. Sorry. Anybody else here for public comments? Can I just make one? Because there's something on the agenda that I just want to bring to the forefront because I was asked by a resident to do so. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it's about the $10 fee that we have for the infrastructure. Um, they would like us to revisit that. Um, and I think that we should. Um, I just had my septic tank pumped and uh, nobody's paying my septic tank fee for pumping. And you know, I don't think at this point that it's fair for us to be subsidizing the septic system. I would like to uh, revisit our um, fees that we have for sewer users and go from there. But I think that at our next meeting, I would like to see us um, take a look at that and, and take it off of everyone having to pay an additional fee for something that they don't use. Uh, Susan's here and, and or Carolyn, remind me, when, when were we gonna talk about water and sewer rates? I don't remember. We hadn't decided yet. Okay, but we had some we had some time. I think we pushed it off till the spring almost or something like that. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Well, I'll I'll um, Joyce, I'll put that on probably the next meeting as long as we don't have a whole bunch of stuff that meeting. Okay. Uh, anybody else for public comment? 
No. Okay. Um, well, we got three minutes here before our next appointment. So how about uh, Catalina? Catalina, do you want to go ahead? <laughs> yeah, thank you. So I'm with the Hadley Cultural Council and we created a wonderful program called I Love Hadley. We call for pictures of Hadley and we received around 300 pictures and all of them are outstanding. Let me see like this one and um, this one. This one you can see over there. Um, this one right there. So we will have an exhibition at the senior center uh, from um, January and February with um, nine of the of the selected ones. Jen has one behind her that we are planning to really frame it even much beautiful because it's like outstanding, outstanding picture of what is Hadley. So um, well, we will put it also several post postcards at the town hall. Welcome, please to come and pick it up and give it to everybody. Our purpose is to um, make conscious everybody how beautiful is our town and uh, hopefully will attract more people to come and visit. Um, also, uh, for you to be moved uh, when the picture you see the pictures to be moved to protect our lands and our farms. Um, so um, you will see the postcards. We have it at the post office, senior center, library, at the, at the uh, town hall, and also in the chamber of commerce. So if anyone have a question, I have like maybe one more minute. <laughs> No, sounds sounds like a great idea. Good, and actually, we are going to do also. I got a volunteer to do a slideshow uh, with all like the twenty five pictures, the best selected ones, and we are going to put it in the website in the town website. So please enjoy. You will welcome to come and pick up uh, postcards over there at the town hall. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> okay. you. I want to add that um, we will be having an art opening. That the select board just approved wine for on the second Friday in January. And we hope you will all come and see these in person and talk to the artists. Thank you. Hey, Catalina. All right, uh, next on the agenda is 4.1 Applebee's change of manager. And uh, Appleby is located at 100 Westgate Center Drives, requesting a change of manager from Scott Buckland to Brittany Robert. And hey, David. So Appleby submitted their uh, change of manager request. Uh, Brittany Robert is here at the meeting. She's the new manager uh, for proposed, the proposed new manager. Um, I've reviewed the entire application and it is complete. Um, so if Brittany have, y'all have any questions for Brittany or anything? Any questions for Brittany, anybody? No, I'll make a motion to accept Brittany as the next manager of Applebee's. Second. Okay, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any other discussion on this? Jennifer, roll call. Roll call for who? Uh, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Jane? Yes. Chunglu? Yes. Miskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Okay, right. Brittany, I'll submit your application. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right, um, Pride change of manager. Is the person from Pride here? Yeah, my name's Ray Sager. I'm the district manager for Pride, and Paulina, our proposed manager, is also here. Okay. So Pride Store, 25 Russell Street, requesting a change of manager for their liquor license from Larry Williams to Paulina Peltier. Correct. All right. And Jennifer, that's all good? Yes, the license or the application is complete and we have no concerns. Okay. Just need a motion? So moved. Second. All right, motion by Amy, second by Jane. <clears throat> Any questions for rep from Pride? No? Okay, Jennifer, go ahead. Roll call for Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Joyce? 
Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you, Eskevitz. Yes. And Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. We're having uh, muting problems here for everybody tonight. <laughs> um, all right. Whole Foods change of officer is uh, the rep from Whole Foods here. Yes, he That's is. Uh, right. Brian McDonald, attorney for Whole Foods Market Group Incorporated. Okay. And Whole Foods has applied for a change of officer directors for the location at 327 Russell Street. And uh, anything for us, Jennifer, on this one? No, the application is complete. Brent has submitted several to us before in the past. Everything's good to go on it. He might have a little bit more to share about it. Yeah, go ahead, Brent. I'm happy to answer any questions that any of the board members have but this is no operational changes no ownership changes this is just uh, new corporate officers and directors replacing folks that have either leaving whole foods or retiring from whole foods okay if there's no questions just need a motion so I'll move uh, second I, had, I think okay joyce and then second, second by amy second. and then uh jennifer roll call uh, roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all. Okay, thank you. Uh, poll hearing. Uh, this is scheduled for 6.30. Do we need to wait on that, Jennifer, to 6.30? Okay. Yes, please. All right, let's do... Um, I see Jim Shea hanging out here, and I... I think he's only here for park and rec ice skating rink, if that's correct. Jim, you want to go ahead now? He probably just walked away. Oh, there he is. You're, Jim, you're muted, but um, are, you, are you here just for the ice rink? That's all I'm here for. All right, go ahead. Tell us about the ice rink. So um, it was kind of an idea that came up when I was uh, filling in for the park and rec director um, while we were searching for a new one. And um, we had the idea to do a skating rink right behind the Russell School. And um, I just wanted to check in with you folks and see if that's something that you would entertain. Um, I, I heard that in years past, there had been one out behind Hopkins and it was a big thing that people like to, you know, go to and enjoy. And I know that with the new fields out there, we never get that approved. Um, so I was hoping that maybe we could put it by the uh, the old baseball field right between Hopkins and behind the, the Russell School. Yeah, sounds like a cool idea. I've spoken to uh, Susan Gowatsky and she said that we don't need any extra insurance. Everything's all covered already. Um, other than that, I, I've, you know, I didn't want to put too many carts before the horse, but I've kind of got things mapped out so we can hit the ground running if there's approval. Um, with some good instructions from somebody else in town, I actually reached out to the uh, park and rec director in East Long Meadow, and um, they gave me some pretty good hints, tips, and tricks to uh, try and make it more successful and avoid some of the hiccups that they had for the first year or so that they, they did theirs. What are the, the dates that you have in mind? Obviously for the duration of winter probably, but. Yeah, so as of right now, if I can get approval, I'm going to order all the stuff um, to to build the frame because you, you have to do that now before the ground freezes. Um, and then we were going to wait until we get some significant, probably beginning to middle of January to flood it. Um, I spoke with Chief uh, Spanknable and he said that he's willing to, as long as the select board approves the use of the town equipment to help us flood the rink. Um, and they could do it one of two ways, either the fire hydrant, if the uh, DPW doesn't mind re-antifreezing the uh, fire hydrants or possibly filling up the pumper truck um, and doing that a couple of times. Uh, other than that, uh, I we basically just have um you know it's not going to have side walls or anything like that there won't be hockey nets out there there um 
you know, it's just going to be more for people skating rather than playing hockey at this point, you know, maybe down the road, we'll get some time set aside for the hockey players. Once we build up some snow banks to stop the pucks from flying all over the place. Um, but right now I don't think that, that would be a, you know, <clears throat> we want to get it off the ground without any hiccups and get this year's materials set aside. And then next year, maybe we could add stuff like that. And, okay. So, so if we could get a motion to approve that and also a motion to approve um, the assistance of Chief Spank Naval to uh, flood the rink at the same time, I think that'd be good. I'll so make moved. a motion for that. And I'll second that. <laughs> That's fine. Motion. I did have one question. Like just Hold on. One motion by Joy, second by Amy. Go ahead, Amy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, are you going to have like a grand opening kind of party thing when it's all set to be open for people to use? Yes. So we'll, uh, Greg will put it on the um, town website. And then we will also do, you know, social media campaign and get it out there so everybody knows. Um, we are going to do lights around it so people can skate at night. Um, and I'm just going to run my generator over there and um, power it that way um, in the evenings. So um, we've got some pretty uh, homemade Good. types of ways to smooth the ice out every day. And uh, there's, it, it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge, but I think it's going to be well worth it. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun for the folks in Hadley. Um, so I have a question. Yes. Some days you will be skating and the next day it'll be warm enough and you don't want people skating. Will there be a sign saying no skating today or yes skating today? Yes, we, we will absolutely have something like that. And in fact, I think we're going to have another tarp that'll cover up the ice when we are not going to be allowing people to skate. Um, because there's going to be some days where it snows and nobody's had the chance to go down and, and shovel it yet and um, smooth it back out. So um, yeah, there will be days where people aren't going to be allowed and it will be clearly posted um, for everybody to see and it'll be posted on social media and on the town website, excuse me. And I think I, I think I told Jim that my father-in-law when he was on school committee and now we're going back quite a few number of years ago that he was actually one of the ones that would have the fire department flood the fields behind Hopkins and um, use it as a skating rink back in the day. So um, it's kind of a tradition here that got dropped and we tried doing it in North Hadley there for a while. Um, but it's certainly nice to rejuvenate it and bring it back again. It's a great, great activity for people. Yeah, and it's a lot easier to uh, keep four inches of ice uh, frozen on a, you know, on, on land than uh -huh. it is to keep eight inches, which is what you need for a hockey rink on a pond. Uh -huh. And who knows how long it would take to get to that point and, you know, how long it'd be viable after that. So, um, you know, I mean, this is our first year. We'll probably have some hiccups like anything else, but we want to try and do it and give somebody, you know, give people the option to be able to do things outside. Sounds good. I know there are a lot of hockey player young kids in town. So they're, you know, it's going to be, you know, not just turned into a hockey rink. It is going to be for family time and whatnot. So they have to be aware of that also. You know, we want everybody to have a chance to, you know, to use it and have fun on it. So, um, you know, just uh, it's going to be a work in progress, but I think it's a great idea. Yeah. And I mean, eventually we will, you know, once we figure it out, we will get some some hockey time down there, but we need to build up some snow banks around it and stuff like that, especially the first year. So, um, and if we're gonna have uh, goals down there, we're gonna need to set up netting so cars aren't driving down Route Nine and getting pelted with pucks. That would be a it, bad first year. It might slow them down. It would be good. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. Anybody have any more questions for Jim on this? Uh, Susan? Yeah, Jim, uh, and when we discussed this, you weren't going to charge for skating. Correct. Okay, because the charge thing brings in more, uh, and, and certainly the hockey issue with Route 9 being right there. Yeah, so no can I ask that. you another question? It would have, a, it would have an Im impact on the insurance. Is it okay to solicit donations if people had such a great time that they'd like to donate to uh, keep it up and running? 
donations are donations when you charge to skate yeah that's a that's a whole other animal yep thank you okay <laughs> all right if there's nothing else jennifer roll call please you're muted <laughs> sorry nobody's on their a game with the muting tonight no. roll call vote phil yes nevin smith yes Tungalo? yes Skevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. I lowered that. Hand. Thank you. I got you, Susan. <laughs> thank you all very much. All right. Thanks, Jim. All right, thank you. All right. Um, since we've got a 6.30, I'm going to jump down to 6.1 Eversource commitment letter. Um, this is in regards to the light project. Uh, basically, we had a hard deadline from Eversource saying that we had to have lights ordered by December 1st of this year in order to get the 50 something thousand dollar subsidy. Um, once we explained to them that there's no way to, to um, follow procurement laws and get it done by that time, uh, they agreed to give us an extension basically until March of, of next year to complete the project and still be eligible for the subsidy but they need something to turn over, I guess, to mass saves or the, the energy uh, program for the state to say, yes, we're actually working on this and we have milestones here to work on. So um, just asking the board to give me permission to sign the letter so we can keep working on it. I make a I motion to have, make a motion for David to sign a letter of agreement with Eversource. Joyce, can I get you a second instead? Jane beat you to sure. it. Sure, I'll second. All right, motion by Jane, second by Joyce. Um, anything else on that? Did they get a final count, David, uh, how many lights we got right now? Or? So we had an initial number of 142, I believe. And then Eversource came back and said we had like 127. And then the, our contractor went out there and came up with even more lights. So this week, Eversource and the contractor are going to meet and see who's right, because uh, we've probably been paying for streetlights that have never been installed, or we may have some bonus streetlights that we've never paid for, one or the other. So um, they're going to sort it out. Some, somewhere around 130, 140. So, um, Jennifer, roll call. Roll call that, Phil? Yes. Chung uh, Nevin Smith? Yes. Chunglu? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. And then, uh, so we have a 630 poll hearing. Uh, hold on. I lost my board docs. There it is. Um, 630 poll hearing. Verizon and Eversource submit a petition for a joint or identical poll location. Shattuck Road. Place one, Julian Allen, poll number T.13YJE29M on the southeasterly side of Shattuck Road at um, approximately 35 feet southwesterly from the center line of Gooseberry Lane. And the reason is place one, Julian Allen, poll to provide mid span support to the existing poll line and provide for the distribution of intelligence and communications for the transmission of high and low voltage electric current. And is anybody here from Eversource or Verizon? Yes, I am. Are you from Eversource or Verizon? I'm from, good question. <laughs> I am from Verizon. Okay, perfect. Um, any questions or anything you wanted to add for this? No, I, nothing really to add except to say that I believe this is uh, being done as a mid-span support um, and I think it's for the food bank um, so that they can have uh, improved services. Okay. And uh, I've got a question for you after, after we vote on this, so don't take off too quick. Uh, Motion to accept the change. Oh, okay. we need to, this is a public hearing and residents had to be notified about it. So we need to see if any of their neighbors have okay. questions or concerns. Any residents here to comment on the poll placement? All right, last call. Okay. 
Joyce, you can go ahead with your motion. Motion to accept the poll change. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Amy. And Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. Evan Smith. Yes. Chungaloo. Yes. Miskevitz. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right. And uh, so, Mr. Vonner, um, the Hadley DPW has, um, I guess, submitted a, a work order ticket for a poll. There's a guy wire somewhere in a tree that needs to come down. And uh, Verizon sent out a contractor, and the contractor couldn't give any sort of estimate as far as when the, the guy wire and the poll issue would be taken care of. And they said, it's basically said it's the phone company. It could take years. Um, and we're waiting to remove a rather large tree that's, that's pretty dead. Is there any way to get a resolution to that and get that taken care of or followed up on? I can, if you would like to, uh, I can give you my email address um, and you can forward me whatever brief information you have and I can get in touch with the powers that be okay. and see what I can do to help move it along for you. Okay, because they just like to get that tree down before it comes down on its own during the winter. Absolutely understood. Uh, my email address, are you available to take it now? Um, actually, Jennifer, do you have it? That way you don't have to give it. I don't have it, but if Don, if you'll email info at hadleyma.org, I will get that to David. Okay, and uh, what's your position, Jennifer? You uh, clerk? Everything. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, I will. Uh, I'll get you an email off as soon as I'm off this call. All right, perfect. Okay. That way, you don't have to get your email out to everyone in the world. Uh, understood. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. All right. Um. Let's see. Is that the poll on East Street you're talking about, dude? And I, I don't remember. There was one on East Street, and then I, I want to say it was on Route Nine somewhere, but I'm not positive. Oh. The one on East Street's marked out. It looks like they, they've got that in the works. We need to vote on this. Oh, yeah, we still have a roll call vote out there. Oh. Thank you, Jane. I thought we did. Jennifer? What? You just, what? You're so annoying. <laughs> sorry, not you. Not you. I'm sorry. My dog. <laughs> sorry. Jennifer, roll call. <laughs> Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yep. Okay. okay. All right. So we got that taken care of. Now let's go down to, um, I think Matt is here, Hadley Farmland of Local Importance. Uh, Matt Kushai from the Agricultural Commission will, prevent, will present the out Albert Al Alvarill from USDA Farmland of Local Importance Program. So Matt, okay. if you're ready, take it away. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right. So um, I don't think Al is joining the meeting, at least I don't see him here, but um, about a month and a half ago, um, Al Alvarill, retired USDA soil scientist, um, contacted um, Carolyn and mentioned an idea or a proposed project that he's working on on behalf of NR USDA, NRCS, Natural Resource and Conservation, and um, the American Farmland Trust, where they're looking to um, expand, potentially expand eligibility for um, landowners and their options for land preservation. So like through MDARS, um, agric Agricultural preservation restriction program and things of that nature. Um, at the present time, soils have to be prime farmland or of national or statewide importance um, to be considered for these programs. And um, what Al is doing is going from town to town and offering to identify through NRCS soil maps, um, soils that would be called of local importance. These are soils that might be deemed marginal by a soil map because they've historically had a wet, a wetter tendency to them, but they're still used primarily for, for good agricultural production. And um, he offered us a few maps to look at to, um, 
show us what these soils would look like. And it is all land that is farmed, has been farmed. It would pass the NRCS, highly erodible land um, measures that they use at that office. And so what Al was asking was whether we wanted to enter an into, into an agreement to um, have these soils that are identified um, by NRCS of, that were marginal in the past of being local importance and eligible for land preservation measures. Um, the Agricultural Commission met on this a couple of times and um, we thought it would be a good idea. It just gives um, more options to landowners. It puts them, it doesn't guarantee that they'll be um, eligible for the program, but it puts their name on the docket, gives them a better chance at a better ranking. So it just seems like it improves um, landowners' options a bit um, in terms of the ranking. So we uh, support this measure. Um, but we wanted to bring it before the board just to see what your thoughts were and see if, um, if this is something that the town wishes to enter. Is there any cost associated with it or? No. J Jane has a question. Is there any negative effect that this might have on homeowners or landowners? So Al did mention, and Carolyn was part of this um, meeting as well, but um, there could be a potentially like an issue, like if someone wanted to use the land that's of local importance for something, say like solar panels or something, but he didn't really have enough data. There haven't been enough instances of this being an issue where it was really something on his radar that came up as a problem, but that was really the only negative consequence that I really gleaned from our meeting with him. So what would be the benefit that we could tell people we would get out of doing this program? Um, continuing to protect Hadley's um, farmland, our uh, signature asset in town or one of them, and it provides um, landowners with, it just gives them a little bit more leverage if they have farmland that's not yet entered into a land preservation program. And that's not to say that they may never want to enter that land in if they have farmland that's over five acres or whatever, but um, it gives them an option. Okay. Hey, David. I've noticed more and more uh, a lot of the people are utilizing their land underneath and putting the solar panels 10 feet or so above all the fields and still being able to farm them. Is that anything that you've looked into? Or? It's not something that we actually discussed in this meeting, but I know that um, I know in other meetings, like Farm Bureau meetings, there have been um, initiatives, policies that have looked at um, solar panels as agricultural use and coexisting with agricultural use. Okay. And so you just need a motion from us to go forward with the program or? Just one of the yeah, cases. um, Al sent a document that either Carolyn or myself can sign. Um, I guess a lot of other towns like Deerfield, Belcher Town, a lot of our Hatfield, a lot of our surrounding towns have signed off on this. Um, either select board, town administrator, or agricultural commission. So, just looking to see if it's something we want to pursue, and I guess permission to have someone sign the uh, agreement. Carolyn, what do you think? Yeah, that's that's really what the purpose of this right now, um, this vote would be, is to accept the recommendation and then to give, it would be up to you, I think, having, you've appointed an agricultural commission to have them be the signature. If Matt's comfortable with that, I don't mind signing. David, you could sign. I think it's just, author, they need, do need some kind of authorization who can sign it as well. Yeah, I think let the let the agricultural commission sign for it. It'll be their their program, so... You're okay with that, Matt? Yep, sounds good to me. I made the motion. Oops. I guess that the motion just be specific that you're accepting the recommendation and you're authorizing 
Agricultural Commission to sign. What you said. <laughs> second. All right, motion by Jane, second by Amy. Any other discussion on this? Now, Jennifer, roll call, please. Oh, she's gone. I'll do it. All right. Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Waskevitz? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Carson? Yes. Okay. Well, thanks, Matt. Yep. Thank you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> is anybody here from the Hadley Cultural Council? She did that already. Oh, that was right. the postcard. Yep. All right. So we're we're nicely ahead of schedule. This is working out. Um, renewals. Carolyn, do you want to do the uh, town administrator report now? Sure. Am I muted? Nope, you're here. Oh, no, you're good. It's better than everybody else this time. All right. Um, the budget requests um, all went out to department heads and boards and chairs and committees. Uh, the budgets are going to be due December uh, 15th, and capital requests are probably going to go out by the end of the week. Um, and um, I am happy to report that thank you to Kathleen Nelson and, and uh, Jennifer's assistants. Um, we received a grant from the Recycling um, Dividend Program. I don't know the details of what that money will be used for, but um, they, it, Kathleen was just great. She just took, took it and ran with it. So it's always good to get a grant for Hadley. Um, so uh, the other thing I wanted to let you too is we did begin the phase two of the dike assessment working with um, Rich Niles, if you remember their presentation last year. So that has begun. Chris is working on a uh, uh, maintenance plan. We have to do some clearing before they could actually do the inspection. I've walked the dike a couple times and it's um, pretty intense just to do the inspection. So I'm happy that that started and I'll keep you updated on that. Um, I do, I am very happy. I happen to um, head into uh, Chief Spank Nagel's office today and he was, I wanna get all my um, information correctly. Um, he was um, sworn in today to be a part of a commission I'm gonna have him explain it a little bit more and what the uh, detail was, but it was just really nice to sit and see a swearing in ceremony on Zoom. Um, and I just, it was something that I definitely wanted to share in my town administrator's report. So Chief Spank Mabel, do you wanna explain what that is and actually how small the committee is? And this is a statewide committee, so. Yeah, thanks. The uh, bus just showed up and ran over the fire chief. <laughs> So uh, actually, the fire chiefs of Mass of Massachusetts, um, I uh, am taking the, of the role of uh, it's it's the um, the state public safety commission, and it involves the sprinkler appeals board. So if there's an issue with installing sprinklers in a building or other safety issues, that board is the one that reviews um, that information, and you know actually makes a decision as to whether it has to happen or not. It's under the governor's office, so it was a long process. It took over, took almost, uh, it was over four months to get all the uh, paperwork done and background review and everything. Um, and basically it's all done via Zoom at this point. Uh, it, it really got big when uh, we had the station nightclub fire. I don't know if you remember that uh, nasty fire in Rhode Island. Um, that happened uh, that changed a lot of regulations and requirements for sprinklers and in bars and nightclubs and things like that. Uh, that's that's when this board was extremely busy. Um, I was actually on a state state review panel when that all started, and it kind of was a good fit. And I had some really good recommendations uh, from folks. I'm actually taking the role from former chief uh, Tom Colomb of Ware. And so I'll, I'll be starting that and it's quite exciting and I'm looking forward to it. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, again, I just wanna highlight that, in, you know, um, small town like Hadley um, has a lot of state presence at the state level. Um, both of them are in leadership positions with their own associations, Mike Mason and Mike Spanknable. So um, we really need to brag about that for Hadley. 
We're the best. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Well, congrats. That's, it. To you. that's all I have. Uh, so that, that's it for the update? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Um, let's go to license renewals. Jennifer, if you're ready for that. I am sorry about that before. Uh, Don had troubles with my email, so. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Um, so it's that magical time of year where y'all renew all of your licenses. Um, there is an Excel sheet um, attached. I can read all the licenses off and what kind of licenses they're applying for if you would like. Um, but all of the businesses listed on here are um, have submitted their renewal applications. They are current with their uh, bills for the town of Hadley, which is one of the things that we work on. Um, and other than that, I, re I recommend that you um, approve all of the list and we will have a follow-up list on the 15th. And then of course, one more on the 4th for all of our naughty friends that don't come in on time. I move we accept them all as presented. Need a second from somebody. Amy's working on it. Second. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. John, John beat you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was trying to get my board docs working and it's just like, I accidentally hit download instead of view for the Excel sheet. And so now it just kind of is thinking too much and I'm just over it. Anyway. So, <laughs> yep, motion by Jane, second by John. And roll call, please. Roll call, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chung Lu? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you all. Is, is there any outstanding, Jennifer, or is pretty much all of them up to date? We have some people that haven't um, submitted their applications yet. Um, they're not officially late until January 1st when we assess the fee. So I don't want to call anybody's name out quite yet because um, we've had a little bit of trouble with the Postal Service this year. Um, a couple of people have let me know they haven't received theirs. Um, I'm reaching out. I'm, you know, I'm doing the due diligence and reaching out to everybody and saying, you know, come on, let's get these in. Um, we have a couple of people with outstanding invoices that I've been in contact with today as well, letting them know that y'all will not be renewing their licenses if they do not pay those outstanding invoices. So all in all, we're in really good shape. I would say that we have 80% in, and um, I think we'll be a close to 100 by December 15th. Great, that's good. Yep. We've got good businesses here in Hadley. Yes, uh, we'd we like do. to see them. Hopefully they will. And Three. roll call. Do we do that already on this yeah. one? Right, I'm going yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, let's see. Let's do uh, annual town meeting warrant. Uh, we just need a motion to open the warrant for the spring town meeting. It's that time already. So move. So move. All right, Joyce, second, second by Amy. Uh -huh. All those in favor. All right, sorry, Jennifer, roll call. Roll call that Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. And I got it to load. Okay. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll answer them. Okay. And then, um, so before we do announcements, I wanted to talk about the meeting on the 15th. Joyce, that's the night the Legion dinner is, correct? Correct. So I was wondering if the board would be okay of moving that to a Monday, that Monday prior. And I don't know if there's anything else on the calendar that day. I, I think that Mondays probably are not the best day to have a meeting. I think that there's conflicts that we don't realize. Um, I'm sorry if I can if I can jump in like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Charles, what would what, what would be the conflict? Um, other people that like to come to these meetings have other meetings that they do on Monday nights. Um, that it's, it's fine. It's, I, I can't be there on a Monday. Typically I can try to make a change if I need to. I mean, you can certainly have the meeting without me. Don't, don't stop a meeting cause I'm not there. So continue so on what that about, meeting. What about changing the time of the meeting on the 15th? When is the actual dinner? It's at six 30. Could we meet at five? 
no, I'm not going to uh, no because I need to get there before then. So, no, you know, I, like I said, I don't need to specifically need to be at the meeting. So, you know, we can either have it next week. If people want to do a second meeting next week, we could do it then. Um, or just continue to have it for that week. I know we don't want to do it the week of Christmas because that's really cutting it close for everybody with with uh, family preparations and things of that nature. So I don't want to put a glitch in anything. I'm just saying that, you know, I have a commitment that I do go to the Legion for their dinner, that, that Christmas dinner. So um, like I said, if we, if we want to do one next week, if it's conducive to everybody, that's fine. If not, um, you can just hold the meeting as usual. Um, you know, don't don't feel you have to change the meeting for me. So next week doesn't work for me. Okay, then just continue on and have the meeting as scheduled because that has already been planned. So let's just let it go. How about a Thursday? Mm -hmm. No, uh, Is there anything not the third Thursday. Thursday. I already have two committee meetings. So, yeah, let's just leave it as is and just don't worry about it. Okay. But, Let's let's do this though, and just we'll cut the agenda down as much as possible since we know you're not going to be here, and uh, we'll just do license renewals and anything that's urgent for that day, so that way you can be part of the discussion for anything else. Does that work? That, that's fine with me if that's conducive for you. You know, we can put off the sewer uh, rate until the you know the first of the year. Yeah, and that's talk fine. talk that about that then. Yeah. Um, because that will be some discussion, I know, and we can get uh, what we need to get for what we might want to look at for sewer increases, because I think that was going to be coming along anyway. Okay, so then let me look at the draft. Do we have? We don't have a draft yet. No draft. Okay. All right. And that's fine. And if okay. I look at the meeting agenda beforehand and I have any concerns, I'll, I'll give you a call, David. Okay. All right, so then we'll just pare down the agenda for the 15th and make it quick. That's fine. Thank you very much. All right. And all right, announcements. I have three for the senior center. All right, go ahead. Uh, first is the Northampton Board of Health will be using the senior center on Saturday, December 11th to offer COVID vaccines and boosters, all three uh, companies and all levels of shots. It's by appointment only. It's between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. And you need to make an appointment by going to northamptonmass.org and then on their town website, go to COVID vaccines and find Hadley Senior Center on the 11th. Second is this Friday, Joe Comerford and Dan Carey will be holding office hours at the Senior Center at two. And lastly, the Hadley Knitters are having their annual sale at the Senior Center this year, and it's anytime during business hours from nine to four. Please stop in and support them. Proceeds go to the friends. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else with announcements? I have some announcements tonight. Um, the Hadley Fire Department um, is still collecting toys for tots. Um, and they started it off at the Hopkins um, lighting ceremony last week, uh, Saturday night, and they will still be continuing to collect unwrapped toys, and you can drop them off at the uh, public safety complex. Uh, the police department is uh, also on their website uh, offering, um, uh, there's individuals that might need some Christmas presents. Um, they're called angels, so you can also uh, go online and um, ask for those, or you can drop off any uh, new jackets, hats, ski pants, anything of that nature that would be used for children for the winter. Um, you could also bring those to the public safety complex. So those, that's off for the, the holiday season. Um, I have uh, two passings of, uh, of late. Uh, one is a, a Dr. Thomas Bombardier. He did uh, live here in town at one time up on Hakanen. And um, he has many nieces and nephews that do live here in town. Um, he has also was, had become quite the philanthropist. Say that word for me. Um, philanthropist. Philanthropist. Yeah. 
that's a tongue tire for me. Um, but anyway, he uh, is a very, was a very generous person through his life. Um, also, we have the passing of Aaron Lestowski. His mother is Lori Barstow, stepfather Jim Barstow. So our condolences to him. And he had two sisters, uh, Heather and um, Jamie. So uh, our condolences to their family also on his passing at a young age, unnecessary, you know, it's just a sad uh, situation and our hearts go out to them at this time too. So that at this time of the year. So condolences to everybody. Any other announcements? All right, so just to be clear, December 15th, 6 p.m. on Zoom will be the next meeting. It'll be a shorter one. So there's so that way there's no confusion. Okay, wait, I just have one thing. Uh-oh. <laughs> no. Um, is, when is the, um, what time is the dinner? Well, it's at, it's at 6.30, but we usually, you have to get down. You don't understand, Amy. <laughs> You gotta get there to get a seat. <laughs> well, I mean, like could we do like the meeting at five thirty? Uh, I, I, I can't do five thirty that day, unfortunately. So just yeah. just continue right. with continue with your meeting as is, please. That's right. fine. Sorry, that's okay. Thank you for trying, Amy. I appreciate it, but that's okay. Zip it. <laughs> Let him outside. He just farted. Sorry. <laughs> Let him outside. Anyway, I move we adjourn. Yes. Second, please. Second. All right. Motion by Jane, second by Amy, and uh, roll call Jennifer. Roll call Phil. Yes. <clears throat> Nemesis. Yes. Tungalo. Yes. Wiskevitz. Yes. And Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right. I'm the only one that didn't have the hour. problem with the mute. And I should have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night. night. Thank you.